This is the fifth section in the sequences and series chapter, sum to infinity. And we already know that if we want to find the sum of a, um, a series, we can use this. Yeah, or with the other way around, the thing the other way around. Um, but we may want to find the sum of a series that goes on infinitely. Yeah, so we actually may want to find what we call, this is what we call the sum to infinity. So this isn't um, where we have a finite number of terms in a series, it's where it's an infinite number of terms in a series. Now, uh, some series are like this. Um, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus okay where each term is bigger than the last and it's just going to keep getting bigger now if you try and add an infinite number of terms it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because it doesn't matter how many terms you add up the next term is going to be twice as big you're going to add that on so a, a series like this um has no sum to infinity so this series has no sum to infinity we can't find a sum to infinity because it doesn't matter how many terms you add it's always going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and the reason there's no sum to infinity because each term is bigger than the last which means that the common ratio here um, is bigger than one because R is greater than one. Yeah, that is going to make each term bigger than the last. However, if I had a sequence or a series like this, let's go the um, other way. So if we took exactly the same series and wrote it back to front. Okay, this series does have a sum to infinity because each term you're adding is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so it's going to get closer and closer to some sort of limit that it will never reach, but it's going to get closer and closer to it. So this does have a sum to infinity. And the reason is each term is smaller than the last. And that happens because R is greater than zero and less than one. Okay, so this series does have a sum to infinity because r it's greater than zero and it's less than one now we may have a value of r which is negative which means you flip between a positive number and a negative number that can still have a sum to infinity it will only have a sum to infinity if the value of r is between negative one and one that means each term is smaller than the last we can write that as the modulus of r is less than one so we can find this sum to infinity if the common ratio is between one and negative one because each term will be smaller than the last and how do we work out this sum to infinity well let's take our sum of n terms now let's see what happens now if r the common ratio is less than one then what's going to happen we're going to have a number less than one here as n increases you're going to have a number that's less than one to a high power it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller the same here the value of r here if it's less than one well actually this bit isn't going to change according to r but what happens as as uh, n tends to infinity what's going to happen is r to the n is going to tend to zero you can try it yourself try a, a number between one and negative one do it to a really big power 
it's going to get smaller it's going to get closer and closer to zero so we can basically say we can ignore that bit so the sum to infinity well the a is still going to be there the r to the n well let's let's say it literally becomes zero so we get that over r minus one now that becomes negative r over r minus one now that may not necessarily be a nice form to use so if we times the top and the bottom by negative one we get r over a over one minus r so this is the important bit that our sum to infinity if it exists and that will only exist if the modulus of r is less than one is a over one minus r so you can only use it if the, the modulus of the common ratio is less than one we have the fourth term of a series is 1.08 the seventh term is that so um it says is the show that the series is convergent well if we've got a series or the sum of the series and if the modulus of the common ratio is less than one the sum of the series converges so as you add numbers in the series together then um, you'll get closer and closer to the value it won't exceed it just won't get it won't keep getting bigger and bigger if however um, the modulus of r is greater than one so the common ratio is greater than one that means that each um, term is larger than last the sum of the series sum of the series diverges it means it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and we're only interested in these ones really these ones have a sum to infinity yeah these ones have no sum to infinity and the ones that where we'll be asked to find the sum to infinity will, will normally will, will be these ones but always check your what your value of r is and that's what we need to do in part a show that this series is convergent well we need to find r now the fourth term which is a r cubed is 1.08 the seventh term which is a r6 is 0 0.23328 now if we do the seventh term and divide it by the fourth term we actually work out r cubed so r cubed is going to be this 0 0.23328 divided by 1.08 so i can already see it's going to be uh, convergent because well if r cubed if i've got a smaller number at the top than the bottom i can already see that r is going to be less than one but let's work out anyway so if i work that out and do the division i get 27 over 125 that's nice two cubed numbers so that means that r is going to be three fifths so we can say since r is less than it looks like an end doesn't it since r is less than one the series converges or we could even say since the modulus of r is less than one but it's a third it's three fifths that's fine find the sum to infinity right so remember the sum to infinity I'll write down the formula sum to infinity equals a over one minus r it's a very easy formula i'm sure it's in the formula book but it's, it's easy to uh, remember what it is so that's going to be a uh, now right yes we need to find a don't we before we continue so let's substitute our r into let's say a r cubed so let's do over here a r cubed equals 1.08 so a times by 
three fifths cubed is 1.08. So if we do 1.08, divide it by three fifths cubed, then what we get is five. So A is five, that's nice. So A equals five. So now we can plug that into the formula. So five at the top, one minus R, which is three fifths. So that's basically five divided by two fifths, which gives us 25 over two or 12.5. So 25 over two. So the sum to infinity I could write down is 12.5. So in other words, this sequence, if you keep adding numbers in this series, I keep saying sequence in this series, if you, if you find the sum of an infinite number of terms, it will get closer and closer to 12.5. It will never reach it. That's why it's called a sum to infinity. It's one of these things that as it tends to infinity, we can say, right, this is what it tends to. Lots of things are based on uh, sum to infinity. So things like when we do differentiation, um, we look at the, um, not the sum to infinity, but we look at what happens as that little gap uh, tends towards zero, which is the opposite. Integration, um, we look at what happens when the, uh, to find the area, we look at what happens when the, the strips the width of the strips tends to zero and we have an infinite number of strips to find the the area so lots of things in maths we look at what happens when things tend to zero and um, what happens when things tend to infinity looking at this i see that the sum of the first four terms is 15 the sum to infinity is 16 so now I'm going to be needing both of these. So let's just write these down over here. The sum of the first n terms, the sum to infinity. I'll put those over there. And um, it says find possible values of r. So this is going to be solving simultaneously here. So it says the sum of the first four terms is 15. Transferring that information into the formula, we need to find A and R. So it will become this. And that equals 15. And then the sum to infinity is 16. So transferring that into the second equation, we'll have A over 1 minus R equals 16. So we, we need to find a way of putting these two equations together. Now I can uh, rearrange this one. So I've got um, a equals 16 1 minus r because I need to eliminate a to find r. That I will put into the first equation. So substituting that in um, a is 16 1 minus r. So I'll write um, 16 1 minus r times by so there's that's a r to the 4 minus 1 over r minus 1 equals 15. Now before I multiply everything out I can actually cancel out this with this if I change this 16 to negative 16 and then I can put r minus 1 in brackets so I will have negative 16 r minus 1 r to the 4 minus 1 over r minus 1 equals 15. So then the r minus 1s cancel out. From here I'm going to divide both sides by negative 16. So I'll get r to the 4 minus 1 equals negative 15 over 16. Add one to both sides. So I'll get r to the four equals one over 16. Find the fourth root, 
and that any even root is going to have plus or minus. So that will give me a half. So R equals plus or minus a half. So those are the possible values of R. Part B. All the terms are positive. Find a, a value of A. So that means that R must be positive. So that means that R equals a half. So um, not the negative a half. And the easiest thing is to substitute that into the sum to infinity formula. So we'll get a over one minus a half equals 16. So we'll have half at the bottom um, times both sides by half. We get a equals eight. So it didn't take too long to do. So let's just highlight that. A is 8, R plus or minus a half. So you should now be able to do exercise 3E on pages 75 to 76 of the textbook.